We can use the Fast Integration tool to integrate images taken using the Fast Imaging technique. These images tend to have very short exposure times, from tenths of a second to a few seconds, so we usually have to integrate hundreds of thousands of images. Fast Integration has been designed specifically for this purpose. The input images for Fast Integration need to be pre-calibrated, and if they've been taken with a color camera, they must also be debayered. Fast Integration detects the stars in the images, aligns the images, interpolates them, then rejects the outliers and integrates all the subframes into one master light. In this video, we're going to use Fast Integration to integrate 890 images of the Cat's Eye Nebula. First, we select the first subframe as the reference image. To align this many images, Fast Integration has a new alignment algorithm that prioritizes speed of execution. This alignment technique assumes that the displacement between the subframes is very small, so it looks for the stars in a very small search box. If this alignment method doesn't work because of a lack of continuity between the subframes, we can use the traditional full alignment method. It is slower, but it detects the new positions of the stars. Note that the images are always integrated in batches, so we will always be limited by the amount of RAM our computer has. This is the RAM available, and this is the RAM that will be used by the process. The more images per batch, the more RAM we need. To speed up the process while all the processing steps are being carried out, more images can be read in advance. We can choose how many images are read using the prefetch count setting. The images in this dataset are low resolution, so we can set both sliders to their maximum values. We recommend always having at least 20 images in each integration batch to ensure that the outliers are rejected. If possible, a batch size of more than 50 is best. And if possible, the prefetch count should be the same as or higher than the batch size because this optimizes the read speed and saves time. In this case, because the images are small, we can use a batch size of 200 images and set the prefetch count to 200 as well. And now we can execute the process. In the console, we can see the progress of the different processes, read, aligned, interpolated and integrated. This column shows the percentage of each task that has been completed. In the case of the aligned images, we also get a percentage for the success rate. In other words, how many images have been aligned successfully. Some images may be affected by sudden turbulence, and it might not be possible to align the stars in these images because they look large and diffuse. In any case, if the images are that bad, we don't really want to integrate them into the master light. Once the process is finished, three windows open, the low rejection image, the high rejection one, and the master light. Although the readout noise of CMOS cameras is much lower, it's not low enough to recover the data in the background. Here we can see some large-scale noise that we know is due to a residual pattern, which occurs because the calibration process is never perfect. Since the signal we have in the sky background aligns with this residual pattern, we cannot properly recover the fainter areas of the nebula. We can see a big increase in the signal-to-noise ratio between a single frame and the integrated master light. Thank you.